Hi, and welcome to lesson four, week three of Julia programming for nervous beginners, in which lesson we look at the structure for end, the so called for loop. Our aim is to learn to describe and use for loops. Uh, you'll be able to use a for code block to iterate over an iterable container, and you'll be able to discuss the local scope of a for block with particular reference to the loop variable. And without further ado, let's emphasize that a for block, like a while block, has local scope. So there are the, there's the global scope that encloses uh, the local scope of the for block. It has variables in it. They are actually accessible for reading inside the code block. But if the values are to change, they must be qualified with the keyword global. This is not as big a limitation as might appear because uh, you can use arrays, and in that case, you can, inside uh, the local scope, change the value of an array from the global scope by replacing one of its elements with another element value. Okay, so let's look at the example. For loop var 1 uh, in the range 1 to 4. So loop var takes that and we'll just then we'll get a character. So let's use alpha uh, plus 1. Oh, sorry, no, not plus 1. Plus the actual value of the loop variable. And in fact, I want to raise that, I want to repeat that also by the value of the loop variable. Now I can say end. And so what I see is that the value of loop variable is 1, so alpha plus 1, the character alpha plus the integer 1 gives us the character beta, and we repeat that once. After beta comes gamma. So that's alpha, that alpha plus 2 is gamma, and we repeat it twice. Alpha plus 3 is delta, and we repeat it twice. Alpha plus 3 is epsilon, and we repeat it four times. To make uh, a for loop, we use the reserve keyword for and the operator in, and of course we go over an iterable. And this is, of course, exactly the same as comprehension. So let's see if we do the same thing um, so we have uh, slash alpha, and I want that to be a character, and I add the local variable to it, and I repeated the local variable amount of times for the value of lock one in one. Four. Now look at the code, it's very, very similar. This formula and that formula, alpha, it's in parenthesis with the local variable added, and then with the caret, the repeat operator, with the amount being the amount in the local variable, or the local variable equals 1 to 4. We could do something like 20 times the local variable, and we get different ones, and some of the ones that we get aren't even possible to display on, the, uh, on my system here. So comprehension can be understood as a specialized kind of for loop. It uses the same uh, keywords like for and the operator in. But it doesn't need an end because this is so well, well described that there's no need to specify where it's going to end. Uh, the end is already contained in the structure of this very tight description of comprehension. This one produces an array here, but this one doesn't produce an array. It just produces four values appearing on the screen, and they are formatted slightly differently as well, because not because of the for loop, but because of the println function 
as opposed to just displaying elements on the screen. The iterable can be something that is not, uh, uh, that is not a range. It can be a string, it can be a array, it can be a range. There are many other possibilities that we don't discuss on this course. Um, and we can change the value of the loop variable inside the loop, but that does not affect the value it next has. So if we go back to this, what we can do is um, I can now say loop var equals loop var say plus four and I can even ask for that to be printed But what we see is that the beta, gamma, gamma, delta, 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 epsilon, 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 they still occur despite the fact that what is printed out by Printlin are the values 5, 6, 7, and 8. Those values 5, 6, 7, and 8 are not used next time around. On the other hand, if we take those two lines of code, I'm going to just take this end out so that I can put them in there. Uh, loop var equals two loop var multiply by two just for a change. And then we see that it takes the values two, four, six, eight over there, and so again, this allows the local variable loop var to become twice as big and that's how it's used in here and also in here. But when we go back up, loop var has taken the value one, then it goes takes a value two. So the values it takes at the start of each uh, pass through this code path, this very straight code path from there to there, are given by that first line. Every time it arrives at this point in the iteration, it has a value taken from there. So let's discuss the pros and cons of for blocks versus while loops versus comprehensions. Anything one does with a comprehension can be done with a for loop. Anything that is done with a for loop can also be done with a while loop. And so the question is, if everything can be done with while code blocks, why the other two structures? And the answer is human convenience. So a high level language like Julia has only one purpose, to make things easier for those humans like us who want to tell computers what we want them to do. And we want it to be easy, and so that's why other people develop a language like Julia for our convenience. So a while loop can be infinite, but that is not the case with a for loop or the comprehension. But they also do take more lines than a for loop to code. So for those two reasons, a for loop is usually preferable. But a while loop also has possibilities that you cannot do in a for loop, and so for those two reasons, there are times when a while loop is preferable. A comprehension, on the other hand, is not necessarily better. It can, for instance, be harder to read when coming upon a, a piece of Julia code for the first time and there's a difficult comprehension. It would be easier if that same thing was a for loop. The main reason for using a comprehension is that it takes up only one line. So it's a way of getting very compact code, which a lot of people like. So we have a number of code structures that we've seen so far in this course. We've had the keyword function and the inline that gives us a code structure. We've got the logical tests with if. We've got the loops introduced by while and for. So if blocks have global scope and the others have local scope. So that's important to remember. And except for comprehensions and inline functions, the others all start and end with a reserved keyword. So if it starts with a reserved keyword, it has to have an end keyword to close it off. And structures can be nested but this possibility must not be overused. So here's a review and summary. Four blocks have local scope. The syntax is for, the loop variable name, in, the iterable value, do a lot of code, and end. The loop variable takes the values in the iterable one by one, and for each such value, this code body of the loop is executed for one pass. And the loop variable cannot be made visible globally. And that's it.
Congratulations uh, for of week three. Thank you.